Okay, this is the second part of the project. Uh, it, this would be considered the mate. You can see it's kind of a, a flower child kind of a look to it there. Um, it's, it's going to be the outer portion of this. Okay, this was printed earlier in uh, silk, shiny silk gold. You can see that for yourself. Uh, making it into a stylus holder. Uh, this would be a, uh, a stylus that is used in, I can't get a hold of the thing here, uh, for computers. You can see the little foam end piece right there. But I kind of thought it would be kind of a cool little uh, uh, stylus holder uh, on my desk. So I did the first half, no issues. You can see that's the bottom of it. Pretty smooth. And then this is going to be the second part of it, where this actually will fit inside this piece. Um, you can see that it's it's uh, there's no lines. I mean, some people tend to print, and you can see visible lines in the first layer. Um, normally, the first layer will be very smooth, and it will tend to replicate the surface area that it is being printed on. So the first layer should always replicate or you know copy what the first lay what the bed looks like. And in this case, it's um, uh, uh, number 2090. So you can see here the bottom of this replicated the surface of the tape. That's a perfect first layer. If the first layer is lines, you know, and gaps and, and cracks and, and it's as thick as a, you know, you're squeezing out a tube of toothpaste, um, that's wrong. You need it to be troweling down. It needs to trowel down smoothly on the surface so that the base layer will have, uh, the rest of the, the print will have something to build on. I also want to show here that the, the bed, and again, the reason I do it this way, and I will always do it this way, is I never have to heat the bed. This is an option where I am able to never heat the bed to, uh, to reinforce or to force adhesion. Okay, this works for me. It, it's always worked for me. So basically, why would I keep using it if it didn't work? I, I don't know why uh, some users tend to keep using the same old uh, means uh, that isn't working uh, over and over all the time. So anyway, this is the, uh, obviously, this is the print head. This is all that's required. There's no uh, direct drive or any gizmos or gadgets or fans or uh, anything attached to this because this is all that is required. We've got our little part cooling fan over here. We've got our heat sink cooling fan here. We've got the heat sink, the nozzle, cable. That's it. So we got your extruder, which is, of course, as you can see, is the plastic extruder not the metal red one or the, the other silver extruder. This is the original plastic extruder body on this printer as it is on all my printers because it still works. There's nothing wrong with the body. If the arm cracks, replace it. It's like three bucks. Takes like five minutes. You don't have to do E-step changes or stepper motor changes or gear changes or calibrations. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. You don't have to do any of that. Just change the arm. Leave it alone. Remove and replace. Okay? That's it. You've got the white Bowden tube. This is all that is required to get the filament from here through here with minimal friction. There's no arms, levers, or gizmos, or gadgets or redirecting the filament when you mount it here. Okay? It goes through to here, and then over to here, and that's it. A, B, C. One, two, three. It's printing right now. You know, I'm not making this up.
All right, and it's printing with a non-heated bed. The set point on the nozzle is 210. This is silk silver PLA. It's going as it always does, you know, 3,900 plus STL files printed doing it this way. So why would I keep doing it if it doesn't work? It's, uh, it's mind-boggling. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to let this print continue on for the next, oh, I don't know, maybe about eight hours, eight to nine hours. Who knows? doesn't matter. I'm not babysitting it anyway. Okay, I got other projects to do. Oh, the springs. Look at that. Those are original silver. Those are the stock springs that came with the printer. Not yellow springs, not chunks of rubber, not bolts and screws and nuts holding the knobs. It's just not required. Okay, you can see that right here for yourself. I'm not hiding anything. There it is. Okay. No bungee cords, tapes, anything. The knob's not backing off, you know, it, it, no matter how it prints. Notice it for yourself. That knob is not going anywhere. Okay, it's at the proper uh, compression right there. Everything's as it should be according to factory specifications. All right. So, tram your bed using this. You don't need any gizmo hanging on here. You don't need any gadget or anything like that. You don't need to print lines and squares and circles to test your work. Because all that shit has to be removed anyway before you actually start a real print. Okay, there it is happening right now. Alright, happy printing. Oh, E-steps. What do you what do you think it is? 93. Because everything in this printer came with the printer. The firmware, all of the settings came with the, the printer. All I worry about, seriously, is a G code. Getting a good file to print, a good G code to use. And it prints. It has to print. All the parts are there. 